what were those moments, Ron, where you, you got that conviction on Brett Favre when he's at, is there a game at Southern Miss? Is there a practice? I think there was a scrimmage that maybe you saw even in, in Portland at one point. Like, how did you get to that point where you're okay as the GM of the Packers staking your career on that trade, trading a, a first round pick for Brett Favre and a complete unknown. Well, I had an opportunity to go to Southern Miss and watch him play. And uh, he had had that serious automobile accident and, and lost 30 inches of his uh, something or other. I'm not, I'm not sure what he lost. But, right. uh, uh, and he wasn't uh, really, at the time I was at Southern Mississippi, he wasn't the Brett Favre that, that usually played there. So as I was leaving, a guy named Famous Coleman, one of the great names in college football, said I need to look at him from the previous year, which I did. And wow, I was amazed at how how lightning, how good he was. And uh, then I went to bowl games, East-West game. He was a dominant player for the in that game, played the whole game at quarterback. And then the, uh, the Falcons were scrimmaging in the Seattle Seahawks in Portland, Oregon. And I flew out there for that. And again, with him, the field kind of dominated in his favor. Whenever I saw him, he controlled the game. And, and I honestly believe that the field did dominate because he dominated the game. And uh, that was a selling point. Because we've had Brett on this podcast, and uh, he, he relived that first year in Atlanta. And you know, Brett, he's going to be honest in terms of the bar fights and the drinking and not taking football seriously. And I think at one point he even said, I'm paraphrasing here, like, I don't know when the hell Ron saw me. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know why they mortgaged the team, the future on, on me with what I did that first year. Did did any of that off the field stuff? And I'm sure you're placing calls and you're learning as much as you can about him and what's going on in Atlanta. He's the third stringer. He's a a sideshow clown in pregame, right? Jerry Glanville's making fun of him. Um, and any of that concern you when you're like putting your career on the line for this guy? Not at all. Not at all. Because I kind of allow, I didn't allow that to affect my feeling of him because of, of my prior experience. You know, you know, all the years you don't have a quarterback in this game. You're in a lot of trouble. Uh, Sundays aren't fun. Mondays aren't fun. Thursdays aren't fun. And then, uh, as you get a quarterback, you can you can actually breed. And uh, lo and behold, that happened uh, less than a minute to go against Cincinnati in 1992. I think you've said to to Bob too in the past that you would have traded the the fifth overall pick even if you had to. You traded the seventeenth. For far, but that's how that's how much you wanted him and how much conviction you really had. It was you're getting him through hella high water. That's right. That's right. I was I wanted that quarterback. I wanted that player. And uh the great thing is he never let me down. <laughs>